In this episode, I'm looking at a fully licensed P90 with all the FN Herstal trademarks. So here it is, the FN Herstal P90, licensed by Cybergun. It's got the FN logo and, of course, FN Herstal right on the top here. And in the little corner just here, it's actually got the Cybergun seal of approval. So, let's see what's in it. First off, yeah, as normal, instruction manual. And here she is. So you've got spring, a 90 round speed loader, a 9.6 volt NIM battery, and your very basic plug in the wall charger. Personally, I'd upgrade that and just get something that's a bit more reliable and safer to use. So here it is, the FN Herstal P90 licensed by Cybergun. As you can see, the body of the gun is made out of ABS plastic, and the top receiver is actually made out of full metal. So it gives it a nice balanced weight, making it just over two kilos. So like I said earlier, it has got all the full trademarks of FN Herstal. You've got the logos, you've got the FN Herstal made in Belgium, and you've even got its own unique serial number at the front. Probably the only downside I can see is actually just here it's got made in China. Other than that, it looks beautiful. The battery housing is found in the back here. All you do is press the button underneath and slide down the rear plate, and that's gonna expose your mini Tamiya and your fuse. The battery supplied with the gun does fit quite nicely in there. It's a little bit snug, but it will fit. You just gotta play around with the wires a little bit. Top, of course, is where the mag goes and it does come with a 68 round magazine. And I've got to admit, the detail I've put on this is really nice. You've got this transparent magazine and you can see all the fake rounds inside it. And they've done a very nice job of it. So above the magazine, as you can see, it has got this built-in red dot. It's powered by two AAA batteries, which are housed just below it. As it's built in, it does also have windage and elevation. Now, to adjust them, you do need an Allen key and they don't supply you one, so hopefully you've got one in your toolbox. So to turn the red dot on, there is a switch just between the magazine and the red dot itself. With the mag in, it's very tight, so if you're wearing gloves or anything, you're not gonna be able to turn that on and off. Easiest way to do it is take the magazine out and you're gonna have plenty of clearance. There are two brightness settings for this and of course the off switch. On the side of the red dot, there is also a 20 mil rail system as well. You can take this off if you don't want to run it, it's just two Allen keys and you're done. So at the front of the gun you have got a metal flash hider. Now this can be taken off, it's a little grub screw underneath and it's a 14mm counterclockwise. So if you want to run any tracer units or suppressors, you can do that on here, that's not a problem. Next you have got this charging handle. Now even though that is strong loaded and it's handy dexterous, it's got left and right, it doesn't do anything. On the gas blowbacks it'll load up and everything else. But on the AEG version, it's just there for show. Underneath you have got the unique grip system and it's designed for both left and right handed players. So it doesn't matter which style you are, if you're a lefty or a righty, you can get to all the controls, you can get to your magazine release, everything on this. It's designed for ambidextrous players, which is quite nice. Here you've got your trigger system and of course your fire selector as well. So you've got your safe, your semi and your full auto. All you do is twist that round to whichever one and it's got quite a nice click. Behind where your thumb is, you're gonna see a little door and that is where your hop unit is. Slide the door back and it's gonna reveal a rotary style hop unit. And then when you finish, just slide the door again just to keep all the dust out and away you go. It's a nice design, but at the same time, it's a bit tricky when you're wearing gloves and it's not something you're gonna be able to change quickly in the middle of the game. The gun comes with a 290mm inner barrel, and like I said before, it's attached to that rotary hop style unit. Because this is a bullpup designed gun, that means it can fit those long barrels in there with not a problem. At the back of the gun, you have got the version 6 full metal gearbox. Now, there's no quick change spring system on this, and there's no MOSFET as well, so it's not set up to run 11.1s. It's more ideal for your 9.6 NIMS like they provide you with, or your 7.4 LIPOs. 
That being said, I'm going to chuck a battery in and see what it does on the range. For the chrono, I'm using 0.2 gram V. So, as you can see, the gun's shooting too hot for any UK field. Luckily, they do provide you with that spare spring in the box, but if you've never opened up a gearbox before, this is going to be a very daunting task. It hasn't got the quick change spring system like I said earlier, and if you've never opened up one before, I suggest going to see a tech to do this instead. So with the new spring installed, let's head back and see what the chrono is. So there we have it. After changing the spring over, it was doing about the 315 FPS, which is perfectly fine for CQB and your Woodland games. Sadly, like I said, no quick change spring system, so if you have bought one of these and you don't know how to open up a gearbox, you are going to need to find a tech. When it came to the accuracy test, after I've sorted out the red dot, the gun was really easy to shoot. It made the grouping so much easier to find. I had no problems there at all, and in fact, it was actually quite fun to shoot on full auto. So, the gun does have one or two downsides. Obviously, of course, the FPS doesn't have that quick change spring system, so if you don't know how to open the gearbox, you don't have any text, you are going to be a bit stuck. The other main downside was the Made in China that was etched on the side of the gun. It just spoils the aesthetics of it. Other than that, it's a lovely gun to shoot. With that raised red dot as well, if you've got a face protection on, you can still use it. It didn't get in the way, it's raised just to the right level. As always, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. But until next time, thanks for watching.